Episode 82, Interview with Martial Arts Stuntman Haitao Zhao. Welcome to the Visionary Variety Podcast, where we cover cool stuff like photo, video, film, books, and technology. So switch on your brain and enjoy the show. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Daniel, the host. We also have our special guest, Haitao. Hello, everybody. We are so happy to have you on the podcast, Haitao. Yes, thanks for having me here. So in this episode, we're going to be interviewing Haitao, talking about his experience with martial arts, with acting and stunts and awesome wire kung fu stuff in the movies. Uh, It's going to be really exciting because I'm a ginormous karate nerd. I love martial arts of all styles. And as you know, I love movies. (laughs) So the intersection of martial arts and movies has a special place in my heart. And this is going to be a really fun episode exploring the behind the scenes and all the nitty gritty fun stuff behind that. All right, well, let's get started with the interview. So, Haitao, let's start with the basics. Where are you from and what do you do? I'm originally from China, and then I'm learning the Chinese Kung Fu since I was mm-hmm. kids, and then become a stuntman right now. I'm traveling back and forth between China and the U.S., working in the film and the TV uh, industrial as a stuntman. Very cool. Now, you live in Vegas right now, right? Yeah, I'm currently living in Vegas, working with Sucker Dusle in Ka. Wow, that's pretty cool to have on your resume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sucker Dusle is, is no joke. They're, they're amazing. Yeah, it's still the biggest company of production, the mm-hmm. live stage show. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Well, um, I found you on Facebook. It's kind of a weird story. So mm-hmm. one of my friends, I don't even remember who, it wasn't too long ago, maybe a month ago, shared a video of these awesome martial artists in a gym doing a really crazy choreographed fight scene that I loved. It was very much like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, you know, just intense flying through the air. There was cables, there was spears. It was really, really cool. And I'm watching this thing. I probably watched it four or five times. (laughs) It's so much fun to watch fight scenes like that done well. And even though this wasn't like a finished product, it was really great and really cool. So I saw your name attached to the video and I said, who is this guy? Is he in the video? And you were, and I said, I told myself, I need to write this guy. I need to have him on my podcast. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and, and and thankfully, thankfully, you actually responded. And I was like, hey, he's talking to me. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, tell us a little bit about that video. Do you know which video I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. Uh, that's the okay. video, actually. For, it's a couple years old already. And then back that time, I was in China working with my buddy, my teammate, uh, on the on the. A feature film the video is the, actually the previous of the of the project we did right. for for the for the actors for the directors so the previous fight scene is kind of like a practice and just to show the director and the actors like this is what it's supposed to look like oh uh, right? yeah exactly um okay so basically director when we meet uh at when we first made a director or actors as a stunt team the leader of the stunt coordinator will talk about the general idea of the fighting scene in the movie. Um, and then we just create the fighting scenes kind of like cool. uh, attached with the whole idea of the script. Mm-hmm. And then we create a fighting scene, we create a, like even the camera angles. And then, yeah, yeah we show the whole previous. And then, but uh, it's going to go through like a couple of times to fix here and there of mm-hmm. the final final product will be seen on the film and then we're just showing the showing the video to the director yeah i could tell there was a lot of creative camera angles and you know i, I there's a lot of stuff going on that, that is definitely movie movie style <laughs> and that's why i really like that because i'm a videographer as well mm-hmm. and i can tell when someone knows what they're doing with the camera <laughs> yeah. yeah that's actually what does um coordinator uh, mm-hmm. doing so Hightow, what styles of martial arts are you trained in? So I start training the Chinese wushu when I was uh, around five oh, or six. I love wushu. And uh, yeah, that's my uh, main uh, profession. You know? Okay. And then, uh, so I've been training Chinese wushu and then for so many years, you know, like <laughs> we say wushu is cover actually a lot of different styles. They say um, traditional Sha- uh, Shaolin style mm-hmm. or 
modern wushu or tai chi. So since I've been training for so many years, I kind of like know a lot of different styles cool. of martial art. That's and good then, for movies. Yeah. And then also I training Muay Thai for about five years. Ooh, that's a great martial yeah. art. <laughs> so, yeah. So for now, currently, I'm kind of looking into the MMA, mixed martial art, and then a lot of like Jiu-Jitsu, um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Guam wow. Technique, awesome. all, all those kind of stuff. So for me, uh, been learning the, all different kind of martial arts can just like upgrade myself. Yeah, I love martial art. Like mm-hmm. when I, when I start learning the wushu, I kind of like get uh, getting understand of the, like a whole different martial art uh, styles. Mm-hmm. Like I kind of learn uh, getting understand of my body and like uh, physically, I just build up really good physical ability. Mm-hmm. And then I for current stages for myself, I just need learning a lot of different styles to um, improve my skills. And then so I can create fighting scenes, different fighting scenes mm-hmm. in the movie, in the film. Yeah, different styles, different eras, different types yeah. of characters might have different styles. Yeah, you have to extend yourself as when, when you want to use it, you can just come out. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> if, if you only knew one style and a, you know, you're know you on a movie and they say, okay, sh- show me what you can do or we need a fight scene for this, you're really limited if you only know one or two styles, but you've got a lot of different styles. So that's awesome. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. You're definitely someone I would not want to mess with in an alleyway. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Especially it's Especially since it's you know Muay Thai. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Muay Thai yeah. is a style that will just mess you up. That and Krav Maga. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Deadly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, for myself, something I've noticed with martial arts and, you know, just learning it is that it never leaves you. Like, I guess if you get to a certain point um, of being serious and devoted to learning a style, which I definitely crossed a point of, of being, you know, totally into it. Um, but I, what I'm saying is it's never left my body. Like when I, <laughs> it sounds silly, but when I'm in the kitchen cooking, when I'm cleaning my house, when I'm doing anything, I feel like my movements are different because of what I know with karate. Um, yeah. Do you, do you agree? <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. Like, see, in certain point, when you, if you're training like martial art, it's not like which can. It's if you're training the martial art for like you, you seriously want to do it. You are you loving to do it, and then at a certain point, you're gonna getting more understand of your body, mm-hmm. of yourself, you know? Like, in certain point, you, you can, like, in Chinese, we call, um, it's kai qiao. Right. If you translate into the English, it's, uh, like, open the show of, like, coconut or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in that certain point, you totally understand, like, um, you bodies it's like body language you totally yeah. understand what you what you're doing like you can like nicely control everything yeah. Yeah. and then once you reach that point when you're learning something different like say you're learning dance or you're learning something else different exercise mm-hmm. you can like easy than than the normal people. Yeah, I, I totally understand. That's the benefit, kind of like. Yeah, you I have think. that that con- control and um, that control of your body. Yeah. And of course, you're more in shape. So that helps too. <laughs> and you're stretched. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> How old were you when you started martial arts? I say five and a half. When you started Wushu? Yeah. Is that normal? Like uh, maybe in China or in the area you are from, is that normal to train as a young child into adulthood in martial arts? Is that a common thing? Yeah, back back that time, around the mm-hmm. 80s, 1980s, yeah. It was real popular? Yeah, because back that time, uh, Jelly's movie getting like so popular yeah. in China. Yeah, Shaolin Si, that's uh, Jelly's his first movie. It- yeah, that's actually how I start. Oh. <laughs> After I watched the Kung Fu movie, I told my dad, I told my parents, oh, I want to learn in that. What was the name of the movie? Shaolin Si. If you translate to, let me say, what's the proper name of translate to the English? I think it's just Shaolin Temple. I love Jet Li. He's, he's a major inspiration of mine. I, I've always loved his movies. Yeah, it's Jet Li's uh, first movie, cool. I think. 
And is his main mm-hmm. style wushu, or I mean, is there even a? Yeah, yeah. His main style is wushu. Oh. So his uh, his uh, before he started doing wushu, he was a, a professional wushu athlete. Wow. Same as me. Oh, like competitions and contests. Yeah, but he was in Beijing wushu team. That's cool. You know how in America, like, if a teenager tells their mom and dad, I'm going to go off and be an actor, you know, I'm going to pursue acting. <laughs> That's not really a great career choice. <laughs> At least a stereotype is that, oh, you're, you know, that everyone wants to be an actor, but, you know, 1% makes it through. You're just going to get, you know, washed up, whatever. If you're in China and you tell your, your mom and dad, I want to be a martial artist in movies or I want to be the next Jet Li, is that, a, you know, a good career choice? At the very beginning, it's like just... Mm, I'm after I watched Jelly's movie and then a lot of kung fu movie. Um, I I just just fall in love into the <laughs> like what they're doing. I tell my parents right away I want to do it. <laughs> I I I just want to do it whatever it is. Back that time I was still so young. I I think that's just a uh, kung fu. Yeah. I just want doing kung Cause fu. It's, I, cause want, it's so cool. I want doing the same thing. <laughs> Exactly same thing. The person who did in the in the in in the TV mm-hmm. in the movie, and then yeah, my parents uh, sent me to the um, sports school and start start learning the wushu, and then um, when I start training a couple of years, um, slowly I kind of like my size kind of change. Um, it, Back that time, the wushu is kind of like just for competition. We learn in form, we learn in the choreo, and then we compete, compete in the form. And then I just uh, want to train it hard. I just want to get in, in to be the best. And then, uh, but around like thir- 13, back that age is kind of like, you you saw you 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 turn into the teenager. You saw my saw is kind of like changing, and then the wushu and the martial art is just so hard, and then like it's not a fun. It's <laughs> not just it's, it's just, just being honest. It's not yeah, fun. Yeah. Like you had to be going through so many things. Like and it's just so boring. <laughs> when I was young, when I start training, I I doing the same form like. <laughs> all day. <laughs> day and then all day and like almost five years uh, just doing the same forms and then like it's just so boring I just, <laughs> sometimes like the coach just told us okay go horse dance it's like 40 minutes uh, uh, <laughs> yeah like every day training section we had it's uh, like three hours long oh, man. sometimes some more that's so different than American martial arts schools here. <laughs> it's totally different. Totally different. Uh, we, we, we don't have fun. We got beat up mm, so much when I was uh, when I was kids. Geez. And then like when I turned into the teenager, my saw it's kinda like, you know, changed. Like I I saw like um like all the kids at the same same age as me, they all they have so much time to play, to <laughs> to doing some something stupid, you know, but I don't have time. All I do is like training, school, sleep. That's a, that's that's my daily life. Yeah, <laughs> for so many years, and then I I was I really I was really think about to quit, you know, back that time. But my parents um, kind of like force me or push me <laughs> to tell to tell me that. Uh, you already been training like many years. Yeah, it's not a good time to give up. You you are the one who want to start oh. with, you know? <laughs> That's good. Good. Okay. Thanks, if you choice this already, just go all the way. Okay. Never give up. That's awesome. And then I just keep going on and then and then I turn into the best of the best yeah. of the team. You didn't quit. And then I've been I've been selected into the professional team. Did, did have you ever thanked your mom yeah. and dad for keeping you going? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and so thanks for my parents awesome. and my, my, my coach. If not because of them, I don't know where I am now, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's similar in my photography. A lot of people come to me and they say, how do you, how can I be, you know, be as good as you? And I say, just don't quit. You know, like if you quit, you will not get any better. I mean, it's duh, it's a no brainer, but it's, it makes sense is if you quit and if you give up, you're never going to progress. So you have to keep yeah. going through those times that you want to quit really hard. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. That's also the thing I learned from Wu Shu or Kung Fu. You know, Kung Fu in other mean in Chinese, it's take your time、yeah. to crafting your skill.、Mm -hmm. You know, just never give up. If there's nobody pushing you, like when you turn into the teenager, you kind of start like has different thought. You have your own mind.、Um, you will give up so easily during during that age, you know. Because like seriously, this、uh, martial art is not fun sports. It's like it's it's so boring, and then you have to get hit, you know. Like you you will get beat up like so bad. And then if you can stand up, that's how you learn. Getting beat up and then keep getting up, never give up. Hey, Tao, your main work right now, like your career, is in film, right? I mean, you teach and you perform, but you also do movies, right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, how did you transition from learning martial arts to using that in the film industry? How did that happen? So first, that's always my 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 dream, or always、mm -hmm. my goal, always my dream job. So how do I start? It's like after I came to the U.S.,、Um, been teaching here for many years. Okay, about eight years. After like、oh, teaching、okay. eight years, suddenly I just saw um this is not uh what I want to do of rest、mm -hmm. of my life. I、yeah. just、uh, tell myself okay um I need to do. What I really love to do, so I just try to get myself into the、uh, into into the stunt world.、Um, and then back that time, I start getting to、uh, knowing some people.、Uh, some of my students, they were also star、uh, with Wu Shu because they want be the they want to be the action actor. Mm -hmm. And then back that time, I just start to kind of getting know some people as an actor or coordinator, and I start、mm -hmm. doing some small project, uh, back that time, and then yeah. yeah, and then also back that time I was living in North、uh, California Bay Area, and then I decided to move to the Los Angeles because I think we I gonna find more opportunities. Uh, over、yeah. here.、Mm -hmm. So as you kept at it, you made connections and met people that you know. Yeah. Said, "Hey, I'm doing a movie next year. You know, maybe you can come and try out or some things like that." Um. First, uh, first, the big uh film or big project I was involved in, actually it's Chinese、uh, TV show. Um.、Oh, cool. Back that time, I have saw I'm I'm gonna work in in the movie as a stunts, and I already living in Los Angeles, but、mm. I spending like you know. Couple months, try to get in connection, and then you know that you know how that work. It's all about connection.、Yeah. My original teammate, they were they a lot of them. They were working in the same industrial as me, but they were already as a coordinator or director in China already. Oh, cool! So for for films, right? Yeah, yeah. And then back that time,、mm. I was just thinking, okay, um, I need a, I need to get a. Get experience. I need to put myself on set, no matter of what. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in China side, they have up opportunity. Also, I just go back. What films have you done in America or TV shows or anything like that? I didn't do much project in the U.S. actually, but I did a、uh, one MTV called Flame, and then a short film called Love Hurts. Uh, chor uh choreographer and.、Um, Uh, stunt, action actor. I have the role in that short film. So you're not just doing stunts where you're getting beat up or flying across, you know, a screen, kicking and stuff like that. You're actually choreographing fight scenes as well, right? Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. Do you do any other odd jobs? I mean, when you're on set, is there any other stuff you do? <laughs> in China, yeah, I did、uh, everything. <laughs> you know,、wow. in China, in China, working on the film is totally different than here. <laughs> so first, I say here, like most likely, if、uh, you are as a stuntman, most time like you just stay in your trailer, and then, uh, if they gonna shooting your fighting scene, yeah, you、mm -hmm. go on set, right? That's uh the TV show, uh, but for movie, yeah, you have done a lot of, like uh 
crevice, you know, and then cool. but still as a stuntman, mm -hmm. you're doing what you're doing to fighting or choreo or getting hit. Yeah, right? <laughs> stuntman. But in China, it's totally different. Um, you you if you were on set, you can do it whatever you want to. As long as you know how, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can you can go learn. Yeah, yeah. You can go learn. Like um, I did uh, editing when I had my first job in China. <laughs> wow. Like editing the first uh, fighting scene, and mm -hmm. then uh, also cover when we on set. We have to be a rigger as well. Is that someone who pulls the wires, or what is that? Yeah, that's not that's uh, one part of a uh, rigger. Okay. You know, rigger is like uh, people who set up the wire. Okay. On set, and yeah. then yeah, also the puller, also who <laughs> who who the, who is on the other side of the wire who doing the actions. So you're yeah. choreographing fights. You're sometimes you're in the fights, and other mm -hmm. times you're setting up the cables for the fights, and you're mm -hmm. editing the video of the fights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you ever done uh, all four things? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, actually I did. <laughs> Edited your own video of a fight you choreographed. Yeah, because back that time uh, when I had my first uh, job in China, it's a uh, it's TV show. It's kind of like a it's big production. i it's a. Uh, I've been working on that TV show for for five or six months, mm -hmm. and then back that time I was a main uh, editor of the action scenes. Wow! <laughs> so during the day I working on the set, uh, working on the set and doing stunt as a stunts, right? As yeah. a rigger, and then during mm -hmm. the night I doing the editing. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> We call that wearing multiple hats. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when okay. you can do a bunch of different jobs in one place. That's. <laughs> I mean, yeah, for me, that's really good uh, yeah. to getting experience, no matter of what. For all the things relate, it's related to my main career stunts. It makes you better than a lot of other people who can just do martial arts. Now you can do the other stuff too. This is a really uh, great experience to like lead me. Towards mm -hmm. my final, uh, my goal, which is I'm, I'm, I really, I want to become a stunt coordinator in the cool. future. Yeah. So everything just related to my goal. Yeah, that that's good to have a goal or two in mind that might mm -hmm. take you five or ten years to get to, but that's you. That's what you're aiming at, and all the other stuff that you do every week, every month is just going towards that one goal. Exactly, you are doing. Like every day, whatever you're doing, if you have the goal, if you're doing something, even the small things related to it, mm -hmm. you will actually step towards your goal. Yeah, yeah. small steps. And and yeah. if something comes your way that doesn't take you towards your goal, you probably shouldn't do it. You know, it's going to yeah, take you exactly. away. It's going to distract mm -hmm. you and waste your time. Exactly. And um, that, that's, that's a big topic that comes up in the photography world is, you know, I have a goal of making... X amount of dollars every month. And I have a goal of reaching a specific kind of people that want to hire me. If someone comes my way offering me something less, or if I feel like I want to start promoting myself in a different place, that's not where my goal is, should be, uh, then, it, then I shouldn't do it. You know, it's taking me away from my dream and, um, and I shouldn't, I shouldn't waste my time. <laughs> it sounds really negative, but it is a, it's a waste of your time if it's not getting you to your goal. It's just a distraction. Yeah, totally agree. Mm -hmm. So in your career, in all the various things you do, who inspires you? Are there any martial artists or stunt coordinators that inspire you? Yeah, at the very beginning when I was in my childhood, Jelly, Jackie Chan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, inspired me a lot. And then, <laughs> yeah, right now, uh, all of Danny Yan, Wu Jin, mm -hmm. yeah, they were inspiring like me Yen. a lot. Did you, did you see Into the Badlands on Netflix? With Donnie Yen. Yeah. But it was a really cool show um, that almost looked like a movie. Like when you watch the episodes, it feels like you're watching a really long movie because it's just really high quality, well, well made, um, you know, scenes. And the fighting in it is really good. There's a lot of cable work and uh, really, really excellent martial arts in, in the show. But Donnie Yen just really shines. You know, he's such a talented martial artist and he's a good actor, too. He's a really good yeah, actor. Yeah, uh, about um, that show. I know they have really good fighting scenes because once I saw it, I know this is a mm -hmm. Chinese style stunt stunt work. I know <laughs> you yeah, can tell that like slow motion, you know, 
uh, how mm-hmm. how they use the camera and all this is a Chinese work. Yeah, you can tell. You know, I noticed something weird about the Iron Fist, which is another TV show on Netflix. It's one of the Marvel's, you know, Defender shows. So the Iron Fist had some really good fight scenes up to like episode four or five, I think, and then it changed. Um, could do you think that's because they got a different stunt coordinator, a different choreographer? Is that I'm does not that happen sure a lot? Because I didn't watch that, but I know yeah. they were shooting okay. this in U.S. Part of stunt it's coming from yeah. China. Part of stunt it's they hire from local. Mm-hmm. So I I'm not pretty sure. Yeah, but uh, I will watch it. So speaking of movies, uh, I've been really looking forward to hearing your answer on this question. What are some of your favorite action or martial arts movies? Oh, I have a lot. <laughs> Start with Jetty's first movie, Shaolin Si, Shaolin Temple, and then uh, his uh, Huang Fei Hong series, Huang Fei Huang Fei Hong series, and then um, Jackie Chan's Drunken Master Two, mm-hmm. uh, Project A. Uh, Rumble in the Bronx. Uh, cool. And then continue a lot. And then Daniel's movie, Daniel's uh, Flashpoint. Yep, yeah, man. Oh, it means great. Yeah. Flashpoint is a really good movie as well. I haven't heard of that one. Flashpoint? You're, yeah. Flashpoint, you have to watch it. It's really good. <laughs> okay. And then, well. and then Wu Jin's movie also. Mm hmm. Mm, yeah, and then as uh, also One Buck. Oh yeah, great yeah. movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot. I I really love action movie and then love being be part of it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's your dream, right? Not just to watch yeah. it, but to be in it. <laughs> yeah, to do it, to create it. <laughs> well, for Dressing myself, go- my first love is Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. That movie just blew my mind when I when I walked out of the theater. I was just like. What did I just watch? <laughs> that was amazing. It was like a dream, you know? Um, and, uh, of course, I love Ip Man. Ong Bak is just crazy. The stunts that guy does, when he slides underneath that truck with a splits and then gets back up and runs and then jumps in between the glass panes, I'm like, how do you do these stunts? How do you not die? Uh, the, he's he's a superhuman. He's a ninja. <laughs> um, and then my last one on my list is The One with Jet Li. Now, these are old movies because I just I haven't watched any recent martial arts movies. I'm sure there's really, really good ones out that I'm missing. But these are just some old classics from my childhood that, that I'll never forget. And um, if, if I could buy them, I would. Uh, if I find them somewhere for cheap, I'll buy them. <laughs> are, are there any like funny moments that happened, you know, while you're being a stomach or anything dangerous, maybe? Yeah, funny moment. Uh, there is a lot. <laughs> First time I've been stunned double a lady. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can awesome. have same high and then like I dress uh, as a lady with um, <laughs> silk stocking that's how I say it and then with <laughs> the booty shirt and with uh, the boots and they, uh, they give me the bra and they put the uh, <laughs> uh, uh, bag in there and then give me the wage and then I feel oh my god so That's uncomfortable hilarious. and then it's so funny oh man uh, after the first time being couple I've been doubling uh, 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 girls a couple times because yeah, I'm that's... not like really tall I only have uh, I'm, I'm only like five feet like uh... so yeah perfect size for a girl sometimes <laughs> dressing that's as funny. a girl yeah it's pretty cool <laughs> Do y'all ever like start a take a recording and then someone messes up and y'all just like laugh or you know someone does something funny happens? Um, once you we messed up, it's gonna be really bad, you know. Sometimes oh, like okay. um, not a good thing. Yeah, it's not a good thing as a stunt, especially. <laughs> like, but you know, sometimes you have to face through the actor. You're fighting with uh, 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 actors. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes actors doesn't know how to fight. You know. <laughs> like sometimes like, you're just getting hit really bad because of that. Uh, Everybody, you cannot say anything. Just uh, let's do it one more time. And then yeah. like sometimes I'm sad, keep telling some, if I get hit, for example, I get in kick uh, <laughs> or, or punched by actor. I just tell them, <laughs> just punch as hard as you can or kick as hard <laughs> as you can. If you are not, we, we're going to do it multiple times. Okay. Yeah. If you're doing full, like, power like full like performance we may just once i i may just get in hate once yeah that's some some something i 
when I'm working with an um, actor, I, I'm trying to always tell them. <laughs> hit me. Them. Yeah. <laughs> It's better to get hit really hard once. Once, yeah. Instead of a bunch like ten times, yeah, <laughs> not exactly. as hard. <laughs> yeah, sometimes like you know, like uh, it's not bad. Of course, you will afraid of to like hit yeah. someone, but you know, sometimes I just stand. You have to tell them, don't just mm-hmm. do it. Okay, we do this uh, yeah. on purpose, and then like uh, we are pro, so just do yeah. it. Have you ever had any accidents or anything dangerous happen during a stunt? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I do have. Like, I remember a few times, actually. Me and a friend was shooting some, like, small project just uh, for practice purpose. Mm-hmm. We were jumping off the roof of the house, like, <laughs> two-story high. Oh. And so we were standing on the top of the house, so I was standing on the level three. Uh, oh man! Houses. We jump off, and then there has a mat. Uh, we will actually try to choke each other or dragon it with each other in the air. <laughs> oh, so no. we will jump off the edge of the house together. I was uh, kind of like scared to landing on my friend, yeah, landing on him. So I push him a little bit off, uh-huh. and result it's kind of far off the mat. Oh. I directly landing on myself uh yeah. on the like grass yeah when i saw it i kind of like oh that's not good i tuck <laughs> in <Sorry>. and then <laughs> landing on my back flat oh. but i hurt my tailbone really bad <laughs> yeah. because it's just really really high but no bone no, no bones break just just really hurt lucky and then i been laid down on my bed like <laughs> Three weeks. <laughs> it, it broke your pride for El Fidi. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, I cannot squat. I cannot sit. I only can, like, just uh, <laughs> face on my, like, bed for, like, three weeks. Tailbones are no joke, man. I One time yeah. I was sparring a guy in my class. He was a brown belt, and I was, like, a purple belt, kind of halfway through the ranks, and uh, or green belt. And I was just really fed up with this guy. He just kept coming at me and I wasn't doing too great. <laughs> so I had this crazy idea. Next time he came at me with a combo of punches, I was going to jump at him and do a double front kick as hard as I could <laughs> with both feet, right? You know, how am I going to land? I don't know, but I'm going to kick the heck out of him. <laughs> so I did it. I jumped. I kicked I kicked him across the ring, I think. And, uh, and then I fell on my butt <laughs> and my tailbone uh, was like uh, almost uh, broken. Uh, uh, uh. It was awesome. I, yeah, yeah. I looked really cool, but I didn't feel cool. My butt didn't feel cool. <laughs> in, in China, we've been working a lot with wire works, you know? And then sometimes it's just putting you up really, really high. Really, really high. Oh, <laughs> sometimes like scary. You just uh, hang in there at the uh, same as a kit. It's just a flow flying <laughs> with like wind. You know, when mm. you're getting high, the wind is getting strong. Yeah, you can't hear it's anything. It's pretty cool, yeah. And then you saw the people is tiny. They were yelling at you, saying, I'm, oh, don't do that, don't do it. I'm you Superman. Say, you cannot hear them. Awesome. All right, well, the last question here, um, what are your goals? Like, What is what is your, your dream job that you want to get in maybe 10 years or five years? So my goal is turning um, be a stunt coordinator and stunt director. Mm-hmm. That's my main goal. And uh, I was, I can say um, myself, it's getting there slowly, but surely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, each yeah. job is a step towards your goal, right? Yeah, yeah, small step. I was trying to force myself to learn, to get mm-hmm. experience from everything, from my current job, from like every day what I'm doing. Now, a stunt coordinator, do they choreograph all the fight scenes or they do they just do the stunt, like dangerous parts? So stunt coordinator, that's mm-hmm. not the only job they were doing. They were not only choreo the fighting. Okay. They have to control everything. Oh. But basically, they have to shoot it, the entire fighting scene. You mean, I mean, like they have to set up the camera, they have to choreo, they have to set up the lighting. Wow, that's a big job. Bigger choreo, than I thought. Uh, yeah, choreo all the like everybody in uh involved in in this fighting scene, mm-hmm. you know. Not only awesome. car- uh, sometimes like giant like fighting scene like involve like few hundred people. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, but like actually as a stunt coordinator, 
Corio is actually a small part of his job. Sometimes、okay. he has uh, uh, the people who who actually doing the Corio for him. Sometimes like we were just、uh, Corio really doing some Corio on set right away before the show, and then show the coordinator, and then coordinator if we, okay this、uh, fighting scene fit his thought, and then. He just sat in the camera, lining everybody, and、yeah. start doing it. And then after that, they had to follow up、uh, with the editing process、mm. also to give the final fighting scenes. Wow, that's that's a much bigger the job than I imagined. That's that's awesome. Yeah, stunt coordinator is really big. I would、yeah. love to be like a steady cam operator at a really cool fight scene, like running around with a gyro camera. That would be so much fun for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean,、uh, camera operator for the fighting scene is really, really important. It's、yeah. really, really important. Like you, you have to know, you have to have the experience、mm-hmm. to to. You got to you got to know every you, move. Yeah, you have to know for sure, and then you have to. Experience to control the camera to make sure the camera catch the movement.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and also the editor is also very important. Awesome. Well, Hai Chao, thank you so much for being on the podcast and sharing with us your story and your experience. It's been a really fun episode. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, I'm definitely going to share some of your videos on our podcast page so our listeners can see for themselves who this awesome guy is that we're talking about and talking to. And I、uh, hope everyone enjoyed this episode. Let us know if you have any other questions for him. Send it our way. And what are your favorite martial art or action films? We'd love to know. You can comment on our Facebook, our Instagram, or our YouTube account for this episode. All right. Well, again, thanks so much, Hai Tao. You have a great night, and everybody listening, thanks for tuning into the podcast this week. We'll be with you next time. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast app. You can also find our previous episodes there and listen whenever you want. We love to hear from our listeners, so if you have any comments or suggestions for future episodes, you can reach us at tvvpodcast@gmail.com. Thanks for listening and have a great week. There's a roach in my living room. I need to go kill it. <laughs> Hold on. <sighs> and my wife is incapable of killing it, so gotta use my kung fu. I'll be right back. <laughs> I'll use a spin kick. <laughs>